If you have a local business and you want to be found in the map pack on Google, I've got a really extensive video here to help you do just that and we're starting right now. If you want to transform your website into a customer or lead generation machine, I'll show you all my best tips, tactics, and secrets to get there fast. Let's dive in. Hey there, how's it going? I'm Wes McDowell, web strategist for The Deep End. And if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, we do two new videos a week and you're not gonna wanna miss any of them. So go ahead and click on the subscribe button and the little bell icon next to it so you never miss another video you need to succeed online. Now this is an update to a video I made a while back, but I promise this video is going to be the most complete up-to-date tutorial on ranking your business in 2019 you're gonna find. This is the same advice I would give you if I was one-on-one -on -one consulting with you, and by the end of this video, you're gonna know exactly how to outrank your competition in the map listings, as well as the organic listings in your local area. And since this video is so comprehensive, there's a lot to cover here, and I've made a downloadable cheat sheet that you can get. I'm um, leaving the link in the description below, or you can click right up here to download that, because that way you can just take this all in in real time and not have to worry about taking a bunch of notes. If you're a local business, you already know that people are turning to Google to search for what you offer, and you definitely wanna be found there, whether you sell pizza or photography services. And when I talk about being found in local search, there's really two places I'm talking about. Up top in the map listings, these map listings, these three listings right here, they tend to get 33% of the clicks on any given search. And then I'm also talking about right underneath that, what we call the organic listings. And you wanna be found there as well because those tend to get about 44% of the clicks. Now the good news is a lot of the work you're gonna to do to get found in the map listings is going to carry over and also help you in the organic listings. So you can be found twice, which basically translates into local Google domination. And not only that, but voice searches are becoming more and more popular every year where people are searching for you know, a restaurant near me or a salon near me. And by really getting your local SEO on point, you can also be found in those searches. So there's a lot of factors that contribute to where exactly you're gonna be found in the map listings, uh, starting with proximity. Then we've got on-page factors, what happens on your website itself. Then we have proper Google My Business optimization, as well as citations and backlinks. So right off the top, proximity is definitely the number one factor that Google takes into account when serving up the results. So in other words, how close is your business to the person that's searching for it? So if you're an insurance broker office and someone down the block is typing in just insurance broker, you might be the first one that pops up. And proximity really is the single number one biggest factor when it comes to where you're gonna be found in these searches. However, if you play all your cards right and get everything else exactly right, you can rise above it in certain searches. Meaning, even if you're not the closest person, you still may show up first if you get everything else better than your competition. So the first thing we're gonna go over is a proper setup of your Google My Business listing. So we're gonna need the computer for that. Let's jump into it. Okay, so the very first step of getting your Google My Business profile set up is to make sure that it doesn't already exist. Because what Google does a lot of times is relies on you know, user submitted information. So maybe you have a customer or a client who wrote a review for you or input it in themselves, it happens. So you just wanna make sure that it's not already there. So all you wanna do is just come right to Google and just type in the name of your business and then do a Google search and see what comes up. The fact that the Google My Business listing isn't showing up right here in the sidebar tells me that there's no such listing for Lisa Weinstein Consulting, which is a fictitious business I'm making up right now just for this video. So I'm actually not surprised it doesn't exist at this point. But now let me show you what it would look like if there was a listing there. So this is what I'm talking about in the sidebar. If you do have a listing, it'll pop up right there. And I've already claimed my listing for the deep end. So if one of your customers kind of added it for you, it probably wouldn't be claimed by anybody else. I would hope not. And there would be a little button kind of down here that would say claim this listing. And you would just want to click on that. But in this case of Lisa Weinstein Consulting, we don't have a listing. So we're going to go ahead and create one. So the first step is just to go to google.com slash business. I would assume 99% of you already have a Google account. If not, you're gonna to wanna to sign up for one. Otherwise, let's just click on sign in. Okay, and once you're signed in, you're just gonna enter in the business name and then click next. And you're just gonna fill out all of this information as completely as you can. 
Okay, now here is where we get to a part that's a little tricky. So I get this question a lot for my previous video. Um, so some of you have a business where people come in and shop, you have a storefront, or maybe you're an accountant, you have an actual office where people can come in and visit. Um, and then there are some of you who probably do not. Um, you know, electricians, plumbers, people that travel out, or at least even, you know, people like web designers, graphic designers who work from home, uh, where you don't really want people dropping by. And it wouldn't even actually matter where you are because people aren't physically coming in anyway. Um, so basically, there is an option here uh, that says, I deliver goods and services to my customers. Um, so there is a little bit of controversy with this. Basically, Google wants you to check this box if this is the case for you. If people aren't coming into your actual physical location and you're traveling out or you work remotely, they want you to check this box. However, generally all the experts on the subject say that whenever you click this box and then you don't have your uh, address published, you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot in terms of ranking. By that, what I mean is generally when you have your address listed, you have a better chance of showing up in that Google three pack in the map listings. Now, there are some exceptions to this rule. I've done a few little um, non-scientific tests lately to look up different kinds of businesses. And it does seem that Google's getting a little smarter about this. And they kind of know the difference between, you know, a pizza restaurant where people are coming in versus a web designer who works from home where it doesn't really matter that they show the, the closest search results. I see this a lot with, you know, with plumbers, electricians, contractors, people who always come out. I do see that being less of a ranking factor, but if you really want to be safe, I would still recommend putting in your address. At least for right now, going into 2019, that seems to be an important thing in ranking. Maybe in the future, Google will be even smarter about it and kind of really know the difference. But for now, um, if you want to be safe, put your address in. But if you really don't want your address published, uh, you can go ahead and take your chances by clicking this and then that. But I'm going to leave those unchecked for the purposes of this video and now just click next. Okay, now this is very important. So basically one of the major ranking factors in Google My Business is category match. So basically is you wanna have a really close match between what people are typing into Google and then what the category of your business is. For instance, if people are typing in web designers in Chicago, you wanna have web designer be your category, or at least the closest thing that Google has. You can't just type it in yourself, it has to be a Google approved category. So let's go ahead and type that in here. Let's, let's just type in consultant and see what pops up. Okay, so we've got all these to choose from. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is for your primary category, which is all it's gonna let you choose right now, um, we're gonna choose the one that's the most appropriate. So let's go ahead and say media consultants and then click on next. You're gonna to wanna to fill in your phone number and your web address and your website URL. So I'm just gonna make one up here, click next. Okay, so now we've come as far as we can come until we get verified. So um, what it's basically gonna do is they're gonna to wanna to send you a postcard in the mail with a code on it. So it just verifies that you are where you say you are. Uh, let's just go ahead and click on finish there. That's it, so just type in the contact name it's gonna to go to and then just click on mail and it'll mail it out. So when you get that postcard in the mail back, you're gonna follow the instructions on it to verify your listing. But let's also talk about a few ways to really optimize that listing to make it better than your competition because let's face it, most of your competition, I'm pretty confident, are not gonna be doing all of these things, giving you the advantage. So let's check that out. Okay, and since Lisa Weinstein uh, Consulting was a fictitious company, we don't actually have that verified. Um, we're gonna go in and jump into another client's listing for the purposes of finishing this out. So basically what we're gonna wanna do is really optimize this profile to give you the best shot of ranking. So from the dashboard of your business, you're gonna wanna go to this info tab, which is generally uh, the default. And there's a few things I wanna talk about here. So. When it comes to the name of your business, for instance, this is Glen Devon Motors. It's a high-end car rental agency. Um, there's a few things I wanna talk about in terms of your company name. So, and this is gonna be up to you, but one of the major ranking factors uh, of showing up in that three pack in Google Maps is actually having your category keywords in your business name. 
meaning if this business name were Glendevin Motors Car Rental Agency, or at least Car Rental, or as close as you can get to it, that would probably help this rank a little higher. However, I really caution you about this and it's gonna be up to you if you wanna take this risk or not. Yes, it'll help you rank higher for sure, but you have to ask yourself if adding those keywords in the category is going to make your listing look spammy. Glendevin Motors, car rental agency, what I might do, I think it doesn't look that bad to say Glendevin Motors, Glen, Glendevin Motors car rental agency, or even Glendevin Motors, car rental. Now it's up to you. What Maybe you are a web designer, so it might make sense to be, you know, Deborah Hill web design or something like that. That makes a lot of sense, but then there are some categories that are going to sound a little spammy if you do it. So I, I leave that up to you. Um, know that it will help you rank higher possibly, but it also might get you fewer clicks if it looks like your keyword stuffing. Just remember, if you use these category keywords in your business name, that now becomes your business name as it appears everywhere on the web. So whenever you're on a directory or a social profiles, even on your website, you're gonna need to refer to your business as that full business name. And next, we are going to talk about your categories. So they only let you put in one, you remember when you registered. So now we're gonna click the little edit icon here. And what we wanna do is fill this out with a few extra categories. Now obviously only do it if it makes sense. Don't add categories you don't actually cover, but if you offer multiple services, this can really make a difference between being found or not. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on add another category and I'll just type in car service. How about that? People might be typing in that because this is a high end car rental agency, so they might be typing that in. So I'm just gonna click apply. And then you can go ahead and you can add a service area. So what you would wanna put in here, so this is, remember if I said you travel out or you service different areas of the community, different cities, different zip codes, you would just wanna put in all those zip codes or cities right in here and then you would click apply. All right, and hours. So you're gonna definitely wanna add your business hours. So just click on each of the days you're open and then, all right, so I've just set every day from nine to six, click apply. And then special hours you'll add if you have holiday hours or something, I'm gonna skip over that for now. Uh, make sure you've got your phone number in there and your, your website address. You can add services if you wanna list those out here. I'm not gonna go into all that right now, but here is something you're definitely gonna wanna do and that's add a business description. So you've got 750 characters here to do this with, and you're definitely gonna to wanna to include your category keyword and your city in this description, preferably a few times, but the trick is don't make it look spammy or artificial. Okay, so right here, I've you can see that I've used the category once here, car rental agency located in Los Angeles, California. I've said Los Angeles here again, I've also said car rental agency again, and then Los Angeles again. So basically you get the idea, just you're gonna to wanna to use this opportunity to add your keywords as it makes sense, add your category names, add your location. You just really wanna make sure that Google gets the idea that you are in the location you say you're in, and you do what you say you do. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on apply. Now scrolling down, okay, so now what we wanna do is add photos. This is gonna be very important, so go ahead and click here. And since this is an existing business, we already have some photos here, but the way you're gonna to wanna to do this is you're just gonna add them by clicking on the little plus sign and you're gonna drag your photos right into here. But before we do that, I just kinda of wanna go over here. So basically we've got different categories of photos. You know, you wanna make sure they're in the right area. Um, you know, you can add videos as well. Videos are great. Interior shots, exterior shots. Um, at work, so like you helping customers, team, that would be your uh, your employees, identity, that would be you know your logo right here, that would be under identity. But if you really wanna take things up to the next level and kick it up a notch, I'm gonna show you a really cool trick you can use to really further emphasize that you are in the location that you say you're in. And that involves what we call geotagging your photos, which sounds very complicated, but stay with me here because it's not. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it in like two steps. Okay, so here we are on the website, geoimgr.com, and it's really easy. All you need to do is take the photos you wanna to add to your listing. I'm just gonna go ahead and drag one over here. And then 
what it wants you to do is tag the place. So if you've already verified your account, uh, you should just be able to type in the name of your business. Perfect, and it pops right up here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on that. And if it's not listed here for some reason, you may just have to type in your business address, which works just as well. All right, so we've got the little pin right here in the right place. It gives you the latitude, longitude. You don't have to mess with that. And then what you're gonna do is go right down here and click on write EXIF tags. So it's tagged the photo with the location just in the metadata and you don't have to worry about anything else. Google can read that on the photo and it really just further cements you into your location. So then go ahead and click on download and you'll do this for every photo you wanna use. And what I would do here for some extra points is I would, if I were you, I would name all of your photos with any kind of combination of your business name, your category names, and your location. So let's go ahead and name this one Car Rental Agency Los Angeles, California, and I'll just click on Save. And again, you'll do this for all your images, and then you'll go back to your listing, click on the plus sign, and then you'll just go ahead and you'll drag and drop that photo right over there. Okay, and one more thing I wanna show you is if you go over to Posts, this is a uh, fairly newish feature that basically allows you to add little offers or little news items to your Google My Business listing. So when people are searching for your business name that in that right sidebar, it'll come up with whatever the latest offer you have is or the latest thing you're doing in the community. So it's a great way if you have some kind of a sale or some kind of a special promotion, you can promote it right there. Um, just go ahead and you know on post and then you, just, you would just write it like normal. Um, it's under different categories, you can have an event, you can have an offer, you can feature a product. So you've got 1500 characters, just write it out here. It's kind of a shorter form. And then add an image to go along with it. And then you just click on publish. And these things last for seven days. So it's not like a set it and forget it, do it once and it's always there. But they can be really powerful getting the word out on a new offer. And to really round out your Google My Business profile, you're gonna want some reviews. Five star reviews, as many as you can get. Um, I do have a whole video on this, so if you wanna click up here, you can watch for some really strategic ways of getting good reviews. So getting these reviews aren't really a huge ranking factor per se, meaning they're not gonna push you up to the top, but you don't wanna be in the top if you don't have any reviews, because what'll happen is you're there with two other companies, and let's say the other two have reviews and you don't, no one's ever gonna click on your listing. So you not only want to show up in that top three spots, you wanna get the click as well. And for customers to be able to see those five stars right there, that's usually enough to do the trick. Okay, next section, we're gonna talk about proper on-page optimization. So what do you do on your website to make it really closely align with all the information on your Google My Business profile? Now there's actually lots to do here, but the first thing you wanna do is make sure your website is really mobile friendly because over 60% of people, particularly in a local search, are gonna be doing it from their mobile devices and Google knows if it's gonna be a good experience or a bad experience and guess what they don't show to customers. They don't show the sites that they know are gonna be bad. So from Google, just type in mo Google mobile friendly and then just type in your web address right here and then click on run test and it'll give you a list of all the improvements you can make to make it even better for mobile. Okay, so now here we are on the design of a homepage for that same client. So there's a few things you're definitely gonna to wanna to include on the homepage that are really going to let Google My Business kind of latch on to certain areas to really um, put it all together. And the first thing I want you to pay attention to is what we call the H1 tag here. This is the main header for the page. So what you wanna do is, you know, and we can get into a lot of um, semantics here about whether it's better to write for the search engines or to write for people. I happen to believe it's always the priority one is to write to be persuasive to the people coming to the page, but that's not the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video is just to show you everything you can do to rank as high as possible. Um, so what I would definitely recommend in that case is to include the category keyword and the city. So what we've got here is car rental agency in Los Angeles. So both bases are covered. And I think I've done as decent a job as possible of actually making it read well too for human beings to be fairly persuasive. So we've got that covered there. 
And then what you're going to want to do is be sure to um, include those keywords in other areas around the page as well. So what we've got here is, you know, it doesn't always have to be the exact same wording, but we have the word car rentals and we have Los Angeles again. We have uh, Los Angeles car rental agency. We have, remember how we chose the secondary uh, phrase car service. We have car service, Los Angeles. So basically what you're trying to do is really just add these keyword phrases wherever you can as long as it reads well. So find those opportunities. What I like to tell people to do is, um, you know, write for people first and then throw in those opportunities as you can. So here's something that's really important. Um, it's kind of a, an above and beyond measure you can do. So what I would recommend you do is get a video. It can be a custom made video. The video really can be anything. Obviously, if people are gonna see it, I recommend that it makes sense to be on your page. But I want you to remember two things. First, it has to be on YouTube because Google owns YouTube, so it's a big ranking factor to have a YouTube embedded video on your page. And the second thing I want you to pay attention to is how we've titled the video. It has the name of the business, and it has car rental agency in Los Angeles, California with the zip code. So we're really doing everything we can to include that all over the place. And um, just having it be embedded in a YouTube video is going to be even more powerful. So um, put some thought into what that video could be. You could even just go to fiverr.com and have basically an actor read whatever script you want them to read, maybe a blurb about your business. If you're not comfortable doing it yourself, just keep in mind if it's on your homepage, people are likely to actually see it. So you're probably better off putting a little bit of effort into the video if you're gonna do it. Um, and going down the page, we've got another instance of Los Angeles and car rental. And here we have this section where we have little links to the areas that we service. So we've got, you know, Van Nuys Airport, it's a, which is close to uh, this actual rental car agency. We have Los Angeles, Beverly Hills, Pacific Palisades. These are cities. And what we're doing here is we're actually linking each of these city names to the official city website. Again, just another strong signal to Google that we're operating in this locality. And then down to the footer, this is um, a really important area actually as well. So what we've got, so this is gonna be on every page in the footer. We have the name of the business, we have the category and city, and then we have the address is exactly as we have it in Google My Business. Again, you wanna have it be exactly the same everywhere. And phone number. And then hours. Um, notice we didn't just say Monday through Friday, nine to six, because this is basically exactly how they have it listed out on Google My Business. Every day of the week, and then I've even formatted, you know, the, the nine colon zero zero uh, space AM. You know, there's so many ways that this could be formatted, but to have it be exactly the way Google does it is the way you wanna do it. And then right over here, you would want this to be an actual embedded Google map. It's not just an image with the map pin in the ex on the right address. This is just kind of a dummy page. This isn't the right address, but it just gives you the idea of what should be there. And then underneath that, we have a link click here for driving directions. So it's another, it's a link to a Google map that basically, again, it's another signal to Google that you are where you say you are. So all these things working together really do a good job of telling Google that you should definitely be found for your keyword in your city. And while it's great to have all that information on your page exactly the way it appears in your Google My Business listing, there's still a little bit of work to be done to really make it count and that's to add what we call schema to your website. That really allows Google to map out and structure exactly what information needs to align with what. So in other words, phone number, um, it's not just text on your page, but, it, but there's actually something pointing to it saying, hey Google, this is the phone number, this is the address. So it really aligns everything perfectly and there's a really easy way to do it. So let's jump into that. Okay, so we're on the back end of the DeepEnds WordPress website. Um, and the way we get to this page, we're on the plugins page. Um, so you're just gonna navigate down here to where it says plugins. Then you're gonna go over here and you're gonna search for a plugin called Local Business Schema Lite. 
Okay, so this is basically a really lightweight plugin you can use to further signal to Google uh, your location and all the information so it lines up just perfectly with what they've got. So go ahead and once you found that here, just click on Install Now and then on Activate. Okay, once it's activated, you're just gonna go over down on the right, uh, the left sidebar, sorry, and go down to where it says WP Speed LBS. That's the one we're looking for. Go ahead and click on that. And this is, this couldn't be easier. You're just gonna enter in all of your details exactly the way you entered them in on Google My Business. And once you've put it all in, you're just gonna go down and click on Activate and then Save Changes. And another thing you can do on your website to really help you rank locally is to use your blog to post really location specific content. Now ideally you'd wanna keep it um, grounded in your niche. So you wouldn't just wanna talk about generic local events necessarily, but anytime you can tie what you do to something that's going on locally or use quotes from other local people or other local businesses and really use your city name as many times as you can in your articles, really tying you to your city, it's gonna do you a lot of good in the long run. All right, and the next topic I wanna cover are citations. So a citation is just any mention of your business or your brand anywhere on the web. These usually come you know, in directory listings, social profiles, that kind of thing. But the main thing that you really wanna keep in mind here is what we call the NAP, N-A-P, name, address, phone. Now the thing that's so frustrating about the NAP is it has to be very consistent across everywhere it appears online. So what you wanna do is once you in input your address on Google My Business, uh, it's gonna format that address in a certain way. Now what you wanna do is whenever you build out these citations, and I'm gonna go over that in a second, how to do that, um, you're gonna to want to use the exact address, the exact phone number, the exact way it's written out. And there's sticklers for this. I'm talking as consistent as um, if you're abbreviating the word street versus writing out street. Whichever you go with, whichever Google My Business has, that's how you want to do it. That goes for a state abbreviation versus spelling out your state. If you have a suite number, do you say suite 170 or do you say, you know, pound sign hashtag 170? Do you say unit 170? These are all things you have to really pay attention to. But I think you get it. So let's jump over to the computer to get started with citations. So your first step when it comes to building citations is actually taking an audit and seeing if you have any current citations out there. And if so, do any of them need to be cleaned up? So let's go ahead and see what we've got here. Okay, so just type in your business name right there. And if you're new, if it's a brand new business, you probably don't have any citations anyway. So you can probably safely skip this step, but I would still just try to make sure. All right, so we've got a pretty dismal score here of 34%. So, and it's saying, you know, there's a chance to get up to 83% using Moz Local, but let's just go ahead and see what they have to say about what we've got. So here are our complete citations. So these are ones that they deem to be a uh, thumbs up and it gives you little percentages with them. So basically, um, you know, super pages, uh, city search, insider pages, and hot frog. Uh, these are not as optimized as they could be. What that tells me then is you should go into all these listings and really make sure that they're as optimized as possible. Uh, this one, for instance, on City Search says it's 9% incomplete and 36% inconsistent. So by inconsistent, maybe the address isn't showing up exactly correct or in exactly the same way that it does on Google My Business. So then let's go over to the incomplete tab and see what we've got here. Okay, so it's saying on super pages, it says to add two more categories because I think it's they're seeing what's on Google My Business and they, they want us to go ahead and make sure all those categories are added to these as well. And this one is insider pages. It's saying add one more photo and add one more category. So it's pretty much telling you exactly what to do, which is the good news. And then you can easily just click on update listing. It'll take you to it and then just make sure you closely match it to what Google My Business has. And then if you go to inconsistent, uh, see, it's really good about showing you exactly what's wrong here. So in this case, it says it starts with suite 170 and it looks like it's spelling out California. So you can really start to see what I'm talking about. They're real sticklers about this stuff, which gets kind of frustrating, but got to play by their rules if you want to get the results. So, um, and then duplicates, it's giving a thumbs up. So it looks like we are good to go on duplicates. So once 
you get all of these fixed the way they want you to get them fixed, what you're gonna to wanna to do is add even more citations. This is kind of an instance of the more the merrier, the more you have, the better shot you have to rank. So there's a few, there's a place that I want you to go that's really gonna show you a lot of your best opportunities to get some of these citations. So, okay, so we're gonna be talking about uh, these citations in basically two different areas. You wanna get citations on directories that apply to your category type of your business. And you also wanna get them on directory sites that apply to the city that your business is in. So you're gonna to go to whitespark.ca slash best citations by category slash US if you're here. If not, you're gonna to wanna to choose your particular country. And you're just gonna go down and look at the business category you're in. So um, if you're an accountant, it's gonna show you these are the ones you wanna get. Or if you're uh, an architect, how about these ones? Do you want to get listed on all of these? Because a lot of businesses, a lot of business categories have their own stuff. Like lawyers have Avo, you know, contractors have Angie's List, for instance. So you're just going to want to find all the opportunities you can and build out those citations on as many as you can. All right, so next we're going to talk about the directories that apply to your city. So it's the same thing. You're gonna to go to whitespark.ca slash best citations by city slash US, if you're here, of course, and just scroll down to the city where your business is. So what you'll notice is for most of these, it's gonna be the same stuff. It's gonna be Yellow Pages, Yelp, Facebook, um, all, the, all the normals that, that apply to all the cities. But then there will be here and there certain directories that are really city specific. Like look here, so for Beaumont, Texas, we've got local.beaumontenterprise.com or beaumont.edu. So there will be those opportunities. So basically put a list together of all the ones for your category and all the ones for your city and just go and spend an afternoon inputting your information on all of those and make sure it's as consistent as possible with how it appears on your Google My Business listing and you should be in really good shape. Okay, now the last big factor that we wanna talk about here are backlinks, which are basically just any other website linking to your site. People used to think that backlinks weren't super important when it came to ranking in the map listings, but they are. They are actually a pretty powerful ranking signal to Google, even in local SEO. And the good news is, once you build these citations, you're gonna get a lot of backlinks naturally that way through the directories uh, that you're, you'll be listed on. But you're probably gonna wanna get some additional backlinks as well if you really wanna dominate both the maps and the organic listings. And the first place to start is by getting a Better Business Bureau link. It's a pretty high authority link that you're definitely gonna to wanna to get. I think there's a paid version and a free version. So when you fill out your profile on Better Business Bureau, they're probably gonna follow that up and try to hit you up for a paid version of, of the profile. Um, but I don't think you need that. I'm pretty sure that the link is the same either way. I actually have a really in-depth video about how to build quality backlinks, and you can watch that by clicking right up here. And you can absolutely do this yourself. However, go in knowing it is time consuming. For that reason, I'm probably gonna recommend that you just hire this part out. I use a company called The Hoth for this. Um, they're experts, they know what they're doing, and they're not that expensive. So basically the time you'd save just by hiring them to do it is well worth the money. And they actually have a local package, which basically you can have the backlinks and citations built in one package using them. So I would, I would definitely recommend going that route. And I am including the link to the Hoth in the description below. So if you wanna check that out. All right, that was a lot to cover. I hope you learned something and I hope you're able to actually implement this on your own site and see really great results. But now I wanna hear from you. I know you've probably got a lot of questions about this. We've covered a lot. So any questions or comments or any tips you have for other people watching this video, just go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. I'll answer any questions that I possibly can. And if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and click on the circle icon right down over here. You're not gonna wanna miss out. And if you haven't accessed that free cheat sheet that's gonna guide you through all this stuff, you can get that by clicking this box right up here. All right, I'm Wes McDowell for The Deep End and I'll see you in our next video.